Here at BAE Systems, engineers and pilots are working on a cutting-edge collaborative design process in what could be the new frontier in manned military aviation. This is BAE's aircraft design facility in Preston, England, where they've created everything from the original Eurofighter Typhoon jet to experimental unmanned aerial vehicles, but it's their recent innovation on what is considered the world's most advanced military aircraft, the F-35 fighter jet, that's put BAE firmly in the sight of its VR rivals. In a purpose-built facility among several of the company's top R&D labs is a project that, although firmly grounded, the company hopes will take virtual reality to new heights. The F-35 aircraft simulator is an ultra-high fidelity virtual environment designed to create the next generation of aircraft and pilots. Flight simulation is absolutely core to the development of new aircraft because it allows you to develop and experiment and test in an environment long before you can see the product on the runway for real. It's essential, it's an essential tool. We're all familiar with the look and feel of flight simulators, but BAE insists this goes way beyond the traditional. In fact, engineers here have created not only a full-scale immersive model of the aircraft itself, but also highly accurate renderings of the outside terrain, including, of course, hostile environments. It is a highly representative digital model of the actual aircraft and it's got the flight controls in there and it allows a test pilot to come in here and fly the aircraft as if it was for real and to actually land on a virtual model of a ship that doesn't really exist at this moment in time in reality. BA manages the entire internal experience for test pilots, so the importance of a truly accurate representation is a must. Gone are the VR goggles. Numerous calibrated projectors produce the ultimate visual experience, while a sophisticated hydraulic elevation system recreates movement from the slightest breeze to the most intense turbulence. It's as accurate as we can possibly make it. We have motion on the, the cockpit to provide the pilot with representation of the actual motion of the, of the aircraft. And that's as real as we can make it feel to the pilot. The motion of the ship is representative of the ship itself through conducting tank tests in a tank test facility down in the, in the UK. So we, we've made it as absolutely real as we can. Well, with all the talk about the flight simulator, let's go see it. You. Thank you. The system can take as long as one hour just to power on, but once you're in, there's nothing quite like this. So we're in the F-35 and yeah. we're just about to launch from the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier. Okay, ready? Land the throttle so forward, I, yeah. all the way to full power. Oh my God! <laughs> wait, wait, I need to steer it. I need to, ah. We're in, we're flying. It vibrates a bit, it feels like, um, you know, it actually feels it's like... You, that's right, it's giving you yeah. feedback through yeah. the controls. Where's the ship? There. Oh, there's the ship. There's the ship. Oh my goodness. Now, just get a bit closer to the ship. Level it off now, level off, level off. Just keep alongside the ship. There we go. And so we're now hovering alongside the ship. <laughs> we're at 114 <laughs> feet. And the aircraft's holding itself there nicely. And then we just push forward on the right interceptor and hold it in, hold it in, nice and steady, all the way down to the deck. On the aircraft carrier in the F-35. <laughs> Here you are, home, to your medals. Well done. <laughs> when we, um, we test things in the simulator, we can actually push the limits. We, all, we need to find where those limits are and we will test things right up to and beyond what we think the aircraft is actually capable of, because it's safe. And it's everything the company had learned from the simulation environment that saw the launch of a more recent, arguably even more ambitious project that augments a pilot's vision and a plane's controls while actually on combat missions. Mark Bowman is the company's test fighter pilot. Mark, 
Tell me what it is that we're looking at. How do, what is this helmet all about? Well, this is known as the, uh, the Striker helmet. Uh, it's the latest in uh, technology for uh, current day fighter pilots and is in service uh, with the Royal Air Force. Essentially, there are three elements to this, to this helmet. Um, people will most probably be familiar with the safety side, but and it's, and it's a lot more than a crush helmet and a walkie-talkie. What we've got here is a, um, a queuing system that allows the pilot to queue the various sensors on the aircraft, and also a display surface that we can put imagery in front of the, the pilot. So there are three key areas that this uh, provides in, as part of this helmet uh, display system. The helmet uses a series of cameras across both the jet's exterior and the helmet itself to produce 360 degree views with no interruptions. But that's not all. The helmet also uses infrared sensors and eye tracking software to position relevant imagery such as targets and controls within virtual reach. So what do you actually see when you're wearing it? Okay, what the pilot sees then, as you can see there's a visor uh, system on here. So the pilot is seeing uh, aircraft symbology, uh, weapon symbology, his sensor symbology that's placed in front of him. So that wherever the pilot is looking, that information is, is given to him, which traditionally is either presented inside the cockpit or in the head-up display uh, in front of him, which clearly constrains the amount of information he can see by viewing in a particular direction. The system is more than just about increasing visibility and migrating aircraft controls. It also delivers night vision video streams directly into the visor, enhancing the pilot's existing capabilities. So would you say that, that it pushes the pilot into, into areas that otherwise have been, uh, have been untested? Well, certainly not uh, untested, but what it is, by having the pilot now uh, one of the sensors in the aircraft, it allows us to exploit everything that the human being can do in terms of his senses, of which positional and head movement and what the eyes are doing uh, is one of those, uh, those areas. So for the future, we're looking at something which is very, very exciting. In fact, test pilots like Mark think the technology has now come so far, it may even be the key to unlocking a completely new type of aviation. The sort of technology that we have now and in the future could be adapted into an unmanned uh, type environment where again it's important that the man controls various sensors. Something not lost on the simulator's designer as well. This must change the role of the pilot, right? Indeed it does, because the pilot now spends a lot more time in the simulator than they do actually flying the real aircraft. And that balance has been sort of continually shifting over time, over the past several years. It's a terrific tool for making sure that at every step of the way, that when we do the thing for real, either building something for real or flying something for real, that it's going to be right first time.